What's up? I'm KBHD here, and this is the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro. The ones a lot of people have been waiting for, but also the controversial ones a little bit because of this new unboxing experience. But you all know this was coming. Apple knew this was coming. Let's just get right into it. Also, by the way, by the time you see this video, I will have been using and testing these new iPhones for a couple of days now, so I'm into the review process. So definitely make sure you subscribe to be able to see that right away as soon as it comes out. And also, if you're under the shirt, shop.mkbhd.com. But here we have the two new smaller boxes, and we also have some other stuff too that we're gonna get into that's sort of also part of the iPhone 12 story, but we'll get into that in a second. But here you go. This is the new smaller iPhone box everybody's talking about that also other iPhones will start shipping with. And we might as well get inside and see why it's smaller. Let's start with the iPhone 12 product red for this one. And it really is pretty striking visually just to see a box that's like half the volume it normally is because it's half the height. And as you get inside, you can see the phone is right on top, face down. Footprint is basically the whole box with a little bit of padding. So I imagine the Pro Max box will have to be a little bigger and then maybe the mini box is even smaller, but we might as well get to that plastic peel. It's pretty simple this time. And right away, that is the product red iPhone 12 looking not actually that red, but I'll get into that in a second. But let's finish the unboxing. We do have the cable here, USB-C to lightning. The only other stuff in the box is the paperwork, which is all in this little half-sized pamphlets, the product red sheet, the SIM card removal tool, and a single sticker. So just, just one white sticker with the iPhones now. And that's it. No wall brick, no headphones, just a phone and a cable in a box, basically. All right, let's take a look at the iPhone 12 Pro. Same exact size phone, so same exact size box, just all black now since the Pro phones are all with these dark themes. So the black box with blue accents for the Pacific Blue phone. But yeah, once you get inside, phone's right up on the top and the contents of the box are in fact the same. No special fancy colored stickers for the Pro or anything and no product red sheet, obviously. Just a phone and a cable and that's the unboxing for iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro. So the controversy, just to address it right off the bat, is the, the no charging brick in the box. Apple's defense of it is it's, it's an environmental benefit, meaning they won't have to ship all these, these chargers and materials that are just going to end up in landfills anyway because people already own charging bricks. Fair, but the thing is the wall brick that they're talking about that they've been shipping with the iPhone since the beginning of time that everybody has already is the USB-A wall brick and they're shipping a USB-C cable with the iPhone 12. The only people that have a USB-C wall brick are people who bought the iPhone 11. So most iPhone 12 buyers that only have the USB-A wall brick will have to also go out and buy a USB-C wall brick which Apple will conveniently sell you so you can see how that looks. Either way, this is my first look at the new iPhones in person, actually feeling them in the hand. And I gotta say, I am definitely a fan of the updated like industrial design. They look and feel great to me, really solid, a little heavy actually. The boxy sides are everything I wanted as far as taking inspiration from the iPad Pro or even iPhone 4 or iPhone 5 eras of phones. Antenna lines near the corners, super tight tolerances, a flat screen pretty minimal camera bump, but not zero. I think they would have looked even better with USB-C at the bottom, but you know, I guess we're never gonna get that. But generally, the, the square sides make it, I think, more grippable. Like some people may find it a little, a little bit sharp actually at first and a little less comfortable, but hey, people out here are, are putting cases on every phone, so I guess I shouldn't look too much into that. But I think it looks nice. It also happens to stand up on its own, so that's pretty sweet. What I will say though, is the iPhone 12 Pro has the glossy stainless steel sides, and the iPhone 12 has the more matte aluminum sides, and I honestly prefer the aluminum sides. Like the fingerprints you catch on stainless steel don't look great. Uh, it's the same reason I don't want the stainless steel Apple Watch. I, I feel like it's just a little bit neater. It's also a little bit lighter. These phones are the exact same size, and I mean exactly the same, like cases that fit one fit the other but the iPhone 12 Pro weighs 192 grams thanks to stainless steel and an extra camera, and the iPhone 12 weighs 162. Basically, I wish I could make like a hybrid between these two builds, because I also like the satin on the back of the Pro phones. 
instead of this glossy back. And I also don't, I feel like this isn't really red. Like Apple's actually notorious for always changing up colors. So you never quite know if one space gray is the same as another space gray. Uh, but the same thing also happens with product red. And this is the least red product red I've seen so far. From every angle, it looks much more peach, like, like red, orange, or coral. But yeah, now you know. A lot of people were wondering what the extra cutout is on the right side of that phone underneath the power button, since all the other buttons are on the other side. And that is just the cutout for the 5G antennas, because yes, all of these new iPhones have 5G, and that'll of course be examined in the full review. And other than that, I mean, you probably already recognize everything about these phones. It's still looking very much like an iPhone, same notch up at the top, but of course the much better looking OLED display on the iPhone 12 that essentially matches what we've seen on these Pro phones. So these two phones are, as expected, very close to each other in a lot of ways, likely on purpose. And I'll get to the, the price analysis in the full review video, but I wanted to dive into something a little more that's actually new with these, which is MagSafe. So all these new iPhones now have magnets in the back embedded in the wireless charging coil for compatible accessories. They're calling it MagSafe, so they're bringing the name back. And there is potential for a whole world of new MagSafe accessories that slap onto the back of the phone with magnets, right? Now, I don't know about you, but my first question when I saw this was, huh, okay, that is gonna depend entirely on how strong these magnets actually are. So now that we have it, how strong are they and what are they like to use? Well, what better way to visualize what's happening here than some good old fashioned magnet paper? So this is what happens when you put magnet paper up to an old iPhone, iPhone 11. There's nothing really here except down here at the bottom, which is actually just the speakers in the bottom of the phone. So when you put the magnet paper on an iPhone 12, boom, you can immediately see these concentric circles and then these lines straight down them for alignment. So anything that's gonna work with MagSafe and slap onto the back of the phone and align itself has to line up with these. And I just happen to have some MagSafe accessories here as well. So the most important one, of course, being the MagSafe charger, which is this thin little hockey puck attached to a wire with USB-C at the other end. It's not a super long cable, it's three feet, and the puck itself basically resembles like a giant Apple Watch charger. It's flat, it's metal on the outsides, it's white plastic on the inside, and it just slaps onto the back of the phone like this. It's actually pretty much precisely centered over the logo, so it's an easy spot to find, and it's firm, but obviously since it's just a circle, it doesn't align with those other three lines underneath, so it can spin freely, which is kind of neat. And when you get it connected, I believe there's an NFC chip inside that tells the iPhone what accessory it just connected to and plays an animation on the screen accordingly. So when you connect just the MagSafe charger, you get just this little circular MagSafe charging animation and it's charging at 15 watts. Cool. Then there's accessories like this MagSafe wallet that they showed. Boom, it has all the corresponding magnets inside to match up with the alignment of the iPhone. And when you connect it, it just kind of snaps onto the back in place. Again, somewhat firmly, but it's not super strong. And then it just plays the appropriate animation. So just to show you, it knows what accessory was attached. There's no extra settings or info on the phone, but it just, it just knows. Then same here with this whole MagSafe case. It's a full case that has the magnetic coils inside. And you can see, again, those magnets super clear as day. And when you put it on the phone, the whole screen lights up because it knows a whole case is now on the phone. Now, just in case you're wondering, why would you need a whole MagSafe case? What's the point? So, if you have the iPhone and the MagSafe case, you attach it, shows the animation, realizes the case is on, it's Pacific Blue animation, which is cool for the case. And now you can still attach that puck onto the back of the phone, and you're gonna charge through MagSafe. So it's going through the case. So that's the benefit of the compatible case, and yet still, if you have this little wallet accessory and throw it on the back here of the case, it still recognizes through the case what accessory is happening. But if I try to charge through the wallet and the case, it actually still magnetizes, but it doesn't charge. So it seems like the limit to how many accessories, I mean, of course the wallet is magnetically shielded because you don't want to have the cards inside get messed up. But even if you put a second thing on the back, I don't think that would be very efficient. So yeah, one layer of having a case on your phone and still using MagSafe, fine, that's good. Um, but yeah, I think that's the limit too. So anyway, my take on MagSafe is it's, it's kind of cool, but not quite as cool as I was hoping, mainly because of the strength of the magnets. It's, it's 
a little loose. Now we'll see if third-party accessory makers can use stronger magnets in their accessories to better attach to the iPhone. But I was imagining something like a car mount maybe coming out where it's just holding it up with magnets. But if you go over a bump, like this magnet's not gonna hold it up. So I'm, I'm curious how that goes with, with accessories you really want to stay attached. But even, look at this, this is the, the wallet mount, which you'd really want to stay attached. But even with this wallet case, putting it in my pocket, it can easily just pop right off, just slide right off and that's your wallet. That's like the one thing you definitely want to for sure stick to the phone the strongest, right? So we'll see. We'll see what this ecosystem brings. Another fun fact though, this is still technically, it's all Qi, it's a Qi wireless charger. So if you have another Android phone with Qi wireless charging, it actually magnetizes to the back and wireless charges many other Android phones. So if you're into that, you can buy Apple's wireless charger and troll Apple and take pictures of your Android phone wireless charging with MagSafe. Every phone's had MagSafe, guys. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's it. That's the first impressions and hands-on. Like I said, I've been using these phones now for a couple days, so the review is in the works. But let me know what you guys would wanna see in that video. And of course, there's a bunch more coming up because it's Techtober. That's just what's going on right now. So that's been it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.